Cameraman. No. Nope. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Great stuff. Welcome to collect contextualized episode number three. Um, <laughs> this is getting pretty pretty crazy. I wasn't when I started this. I wasn't sure how it's gonna turn out, but uh, here we are. Um, so I tried to do episode two, and <laughs> I got invaded right at the very end. I probably should have seen that coming, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> And I've got to try and pick up. We didn't really stop anywhere particularly conclusive, so... Uh, I kind of fancy doing the same layout again, though, because it felt kind of boring. I don't know where I put what, though. What was next? I guess we'll put complex numbers next? I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll try and jump straight back into where I was as quickly as possible. So we didn't cover matrix numbers at all, unfortunately. Um, trying to that. We did cover graphs though, which is a big W. Um, and we looked at complex numbers a bit. So we looked at how we use a symbol Z. You can have, say, complex number X plus YI. Um, and we looked at a few other forms, but essentially this is the main form. The other two forms sort of turn into this form. Um, I'm pointing here as if you remember the other two forms. You might not, if not, it's fine. Essentially, complex numbers can be expressed in this form. It's a pretty common form. Um, and essentially, what we said was that I is not going to be real, because if I was a real number, then uh, the whole thing would evaluate to just a real number, we wouldn't have this form. Um, so what I is, is we were looking at I is either the square root of minus one, which is a half, or it's the uh, sixth root of minus one, or in general it's the uh, 4n minus two, or one over 4n minus two root, where n is of a certain natural. Uh, so that's the thing. Um, so what does, what does it, what does it mean? It's a pretty crazy question. You already ask these questions. Um, and x and y are the real set. I guess we have to talk about sets to really dive any further with complex numbers. Um, no, you know what? We'll dive a little further. So you're familiar with the number line. Going like 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, and then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Um, but what probably you're less familiar with is this uh, horizontal axis here. And sometimes what you do is label this with real numbers too. But in the world of complex numbers, what we can do is start labeling this in terms of how many blocks of i it's got. Uh, and what this allows is we can say have the complex number 2 plus 2i, which is in this form, sit here. So we've got two lots of plus 1 here, and we've got two lots of i here, um, like that, which end up with 2 plus 2i. Um, in terms of what just happened, what it means, why you use it, um, there's a lot going on there. So. We'll leave that be for now. <laughs> Complex numbers in terms of what's going on and how to use them. Oh, I should really have a collection of stuff to do with them. But I guess we just want to look at the outline of them as kind of what this going on to do. I guess that's fine. I guess it's fine. Oh yeah, we can look at matrix numbers. Where is it now? Matrix numbers are kind of rough. Well, oh, this is kind of rough. I guess I have to do a bit more thinking about how I'm going to explain it to do it in more detail and how I just want to do an outline. So, outline of the matrix numbers. So, matrix numbers are all about lists, so, and so are sets, but sets are a bit different. So, an example of a matrix number would be 5, 4. You've probably seen this before because it's a, it's a vector. So, you could think about this kind of the complex number, really. They all sort of merge together and stuff. But essentially, this would be like four units, sorry, five units to the right, and then four units up. So you have like five, zero. And you have zero, four here. And you'd add them together to get five, four. Um, so that's a specific type of matrix number we call a vector. Oh, did I look at matrix numbers and vectors? I think I did. I covered it way better before. Okay. No way, I talked a lot about matrix numbers before. So what am I doing now? That is the question. I'm myself very confused. Oh, we can look at matrix number multiplication real quick. I don't really care about that, do they? Essentially, if you have number 4, 5, 6, 7, Oh, 
um, you essentially transform the plane so x and y becomes that. So, like where you have a regular grid, uh, you have your basis vectors like this. And so if you have four three, that's four lots of i plus. Hello. Essentially, what happens is, is the i gets so here i equals for the the no transformation is one zero zero one. This is going to make zero sense. Okay, and where that's the case, you have i equals your standard one zero, which is going one across like that, and your j has your standard zero one. When you have transformations like this, which you apply to x y to get a new point x prime y prime, uh, you swap out the things. So here with the one zero becomes four five. So essentially. Your i becomes uh, four five, and your j becomes six seven. So now, if we have points, uh, if this point is four three, that's four lots of i plus three lots of j, but our i and j are different. So you'd apply those to get this, um, and you can do it much quicker if you use um, your matrix multiplication like this. You do four times x plus. Let's do matrix multiplication because I feel like it. Uh, equals 2 by 1 vector, no, yeah, 2 by 1 vector. We've got 2 by 2 by 2 by 1. I've missed out a lot of basics, I'm realizing here. So now I've got a 2 by 1 here. you got your 4x plus 6y. Equals, and then here you've got 5x plus 7y. Um, and that would be the same thing. Doing this, which we could show, I might be worth one, but it might not be. We could look at sets. How is a set different from a matrix number? Good question. You have different types of sets. That's a kind of cool. I thought matrix numbers were cool. It turns out it would be, but I stole my content. I literally, in my first episode, I already looked at matrix numbers. I did the whole. Well, it could even be. It could even be list this way, or it could be. This the other way, which is cool, but it's like already used it. Wow, this is epic. Okay. Sets. You got orders, and you got unordered. Oh, and you have bags too. That's not really a set. I guess the most fundamental set is a bag. Let's reconfigure. Yeah. You've got bag, where you have to see how bag. And this is a graph, by the way. Fun times. These graphs are awesome. I didn't look at directed graphs, but I want to look at directed graphs. Yeah. Okay. Ordered and ordered sets, and you've got bags. What's the difference? A bag can have the same number twice, so we've got 557, five, whereas a set, the set of this bag would just be 57. You can't have repeated elements in a set. Uh, you can have it, have it ordered or unordered. We tend to use these squiggly things if it's unordered, whereas ordered, say it was 4 3, we used the, the big old curvy brackets. And these big old curvy brackets is actually why with coordinates you have those curvy ones, because it's an ordered set, because the coordinates are order matters. Okay. What else is there to do? We could look a bit more at sets. We could look at the sets of set of naturals. Now that we know what a set is, this is a thing we can do. Set of reals. Am I missing anything? No. Set of quotients. Set of real numbers. Well, I call this the set of reals set of just I mean, look at the set of complex. Um, naturals is just like that. You go from one upwards, just the integers. Integers you have the negative ones too. Uh, quotients you can divide one by another. 
So the quotient A number can be expressed as A over B, where A and B are integers. Uh, real numbers that include numbers that can't be expressed this way, for example, root 2. Complex numbers, we've seen are better complex numbers. Oh, this is just a geographic way of representing complex numbers, by the way. In terms of what complex numbers actually are, um, to be honest, the representation is probably the best way to think about the actual. And when you realize what I is and you start thinking about using arithmetic, I like to the power set, though, like, quite useful. Then, find complex numbers can be quite useful. They essentially map, they essentially encode your transformation stuff, like matrix numbers, but they're not algebraic, nice, like that. Okay, I'm done now, bye. I've come.